Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to the channel. So today is the second video in a new series I've started, 60 Second Stocks, where in 60 seconds we look at everything we can about a particular stock. And today I want to talk about Hertz. If you like the video, if you like the series and want to see more, please hit the like button. It's massively, massively appreciated. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. We're really interested to hear them. Anyway, let's hope I do a better job of keeping it as close to 60 seconds as possible this time. And let's get straight into the video. Hertz, the world-renowned car rental business, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in May of this year. It was the next name in the long list of high-profile companies who've fallen victim to the current health crisis we're having. The health crisis caused a massive impact on the demand for Hertz's product. Business and leisure travel was down significantly, and it ultimately meant that Hertz couldn't meet the obligations of its debts. In the filings, they also blamed a falling in the value of second-hand cars, impacting their fleet value. And for me, this is just another example where businesses with a high proportion of their cost base being made up of fixed costs is bad news when you have revenue decreases. Anyway, Hertz is highly levered, so it has a lot of debt. And a number of these are in complex securitized debt products. Now, these are not massively dissimilar from the collateralized debt obligations in the 2008 financial crisis used by banks which contained lots of mortgage-backed securities. Now, it's clear that Hertz are trying to use the bankruptcy proceedings to try and find enough time for the market to recover and for them to be able to meet their debt obligations and continue trading as normal. Now, let's have a look at the impact that had on the market. Now, immediately upon the announcement, Hertz's share price fell by 80%. And then this is where it starts to get a little bit crazy. Its share price then, from its low point, increased by over 880%, but now has subsequently fallen back a further 60%, and it's at a level around 25% below pre-announcement levels. Now we should note the difference here between different bankruptcy proceedings, chapter 11 and chapter 7. In chapter 11 a business is allowed to continue trading, whilst in chapter 7 the business has to immediately wind up and sell its assets and repay its creditors. But still, why do people want to buy Hertz shares given where the company is? And this isn't unique to Hertz. There's been a number of other cases where companies have announced bankruptcies and the share price has risen dramatically afterwards. For me, I think it comes down to three fundamental reasons. Number one is that investors are not aware of the level of operations which need to resume for Hertz to be able to operate as normal. They have massive debt repayments to make and they have a high fixed cost base as well. The recovery may be a very slow process if it ever gets back to the levels it was at before. And this is also likely to be impacted negatively by the trend of people traveling less for work and being able to use technology-led solutions instead, such as Zoom and video conferencing. But so many studies are quoting companies as saying that staff will not be traveling as much for business, given that it's a massive cost saving for the company and that the technology-led alternatives are working well. Number two is that investors are probably misreading the balance sheet. They're probably looking at the assets and the liabilities and assuming that the assets could be sold and more than cover the debt obligations that Hertz has. However, there are some issues with this. Firstly, some of those debts are secured against specific assets, so they can't be sold for the benefit of everyone in a bankruptcy proceeding. Secondly, when you try and sell that many vehicles on the market at one time, especially in a market which has seen high levels of unemployment and a decrease in disposable incomes, you're going to see a massive decrease in the value of those cars, and so ultimately the value which will be recouped from those will be much lower than the value that they're recorded at in the balance sheet. And number three, perhaps the most important for me, is shareholders not actually understanding how unlikely it is that they will get anything back in a bankruptcy proceeding. For me, this is made even clearer when you look at the bonds. All the bonds are trading well below par. What that means is for every $100 bond, you can now buy for around $40. Yes, that's a clear sign that the bondholders themselves are not confident of recouping their money from these proceedings. And this is so important because in bankruptcy proceedings, debt holders are senior to shareholders. What that means is in the payment waterfall, when all the proceeds are distributed to stakeholders in the company, debt holders are paid out entirely before anything flows to shareholders. Well, um, so what I don't get is if you believe in Hertz so much, why are you not buying the bonds in Hertz? That surely gives you a better risk reward profile if you truly believe in the story. So as you probably guessed, I'm not optimistic about Hertz and I'm not investing in them at the current time. So yes, I know some people made amazing returns by trading the stock in that period, but for me, it was not on the basis of fundamentals. And personally, if I cannot see the fundamentals of why one would make an investment into that company, I would not invest into them. For me, that's gambling otherwise. So I hope you found the video interesting. Please smash the like button if you did. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.